Well, if this crowd is any indication, then the arts are alive and doing pretty well in the St. Louis region. We are on location in downtown Clayton this week for the St. Louis Art Fair, where for three days, artists and art lovers will be rubbing up against each other for some browsing and some buying. And we are talking about the impact of the arts on our region and the power of the art fair. So we're gonna do the show Stay tuned brings together, together local experts, journalists, civic leaders, and regular people to have tough conversations for a stronger St. Louis. Add your voice to our conversation and you're at the table as we stay on top of current events and go deeper, bringing more light and less heat to the issues that matter. From the Nine Network of Public Media in Grand Center, this is Stay Tuned. Well, the St. Louis Art Fair has grown to the point that uh, I think we need a regional economic discussion to kind of get a handle on just how much it has grown. Uh, thanks for being out in the sun with me. Uh, sure. Sheila Sweeney, the CEO of the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. Is this exciting to you to see what's going on in the streets of, of Clayton? Oh, it's thrilling, isn't it? Just Yeah, you just look around. I walk past uh, quite a few of the uh, booths before arriving at yours. And uh, yeah, just the the difference in all of the art and, you know, so the creative minds that have, were at work and then all the people that are gathering to see it. Yeah, it's tremendous. I don't want to you know, diminish the value of the art for the sake of the art. But there are some dollar signs that come with this too. Can you help us put into perspective what this means for our region uh, from a business perspective? Yeah, uh, art fairs are, are growing. And uh, to St. Louis, um, the, there are about 10,000 jobs that are can be directly related to wow. art. And uh, just, just here in St. Louis alone. Um, and it is about a $580 million uh, economic engine for this community. Uh, Talking about the arts as a whole throughout the region. Absolutely, right. Uh, we we estimate that about uh, 11 million dollar, uh, 11 million visitors uh, are in St. Louis going to different art events and and museums, etc. Throughout the year, and that three million of those folks are actual uh, visitors from out of town. So you know, just you take three million visitors and you know half or those third of those are hotel rooms and you know in, in our in our restaurants and shops and that sort of thing it's a tremendous economic advantage can we um do we have the numbers to know specifically about the the st louis art fair itself just kind of the the impact it has on our region do is that something that we're able to to put a number to yeah, the art fair itself, I mean, St. Louis has uh, now the St. Louis Art Fair. Uh, you know, we have the Shaw Art Fair, uh, the uh, Maplewood has one, Chesterfield has one, the one in Kirkwood. So, you know, they're beginning to really grow around. So they all contribute to that number of the 582 million, yeah. Speaking of the name, and it was the Clayton Art Fair, I know you're not responsible for the name change, no. but you are familiar with the marketing world. What does that signal, if anything, to you that now it's the St. Louis Art Fair in Clayton? Yeah, I think uh, the organizers probably recognized that calling it the St. Louis Art Fair would be a good draw for not only artists who would be more familiar with St. Louis uh, than they might be with with Clayton uh, proper and you know and then certainly um, it you know it just it it's a fantastic art fair and so it draws visitors as well as artists. You have 100, 150 artists more than 150 artists 125,000 people will walk the streets of downtown Clayton I guess is the prediction. Right right uh, that, as long as we can hold the rain as off. As long right? as we can hold the rain off I think it's going to turn out to be a near perfect weekend once we figure out the rain situation but I guess uh, from someone in your perspective, someone who's in your line of work, you got to like 125,000 people walking through downtown Clayton. I'm I guessing. love 125,000 walking through downtown do for, Clayton. What does that do for us? Uh, but, you know, just think of, uh, I, I think it's estimated that it's around $24.60 that, that per person per day at an event like this will spend outside of the art fair just in parking and restaurants and their entertainment and getting here and, and that sort of thing. Not, so, is that not including the, if they take home a piece of art? Right, okay. right. And so, um, you know, so they, that, that, that's a great amount. And so, you know, the restaurants here are filled. They, uh, 
the you know the uh, gas stations are are happy tonight. Um, you know, just just everyone around, all the all the vendors that are here, but also just the people that are in Clayton and and all the way around. Because if a restaurant in Clayton is full, it spills over to U City or Brentwood or Richmond Heights or into the city. You know, so it just it just uh, all lends itself to economic activity going on, and you have to love that. What we have found in uh, talking to businesses that are either want to grow or relocate to St. Louis, uh, what we found is when they actually get here and they find all of our amenities, which certainly include the fine art institutions that we have here, uh, it they realize that St. Louis is a really well-kept, and we hope to change that, but right now a well-kept secret. and. Uh, you know, and, and so when they see what's really here and how great St. Louis is, that makes a huge difference to uh, people wanting to come. And, and we, we are being successful at landing those companies, yeah. Maybe, we, maybe uh, those of us who live here don't realize the world-class nature that others will tell us that we have when it comes to our arts. Outsized for a city our size, perhaps. For a city our size, it is absolutely world-class. And when you consider that the, the, the cost of admission to, or it's either free or very nominal to so many of our, our institutions. Uh, people are blown away by that. And then of Just course to bring it back around to the, uh, the, to the St. Louis Art Fair, I almost misspoke, then cost a dime. This is very much That's available right. for everyone and, and accessible to everyone. That's right. You can come and just just look and enjoy. You don't have to buy. Love it if you do, but you don't have to. And you know, it, it, it's it's just a great community gathering here tonight and tomorrow and and Sunday. You know, it's so it's it's uh, exactly what economic development needs. And you know, we just we just need people to come and support events like this and others throughout St. Louis on an ongoing basis. Well, thanks for uh, joining us here sure. in downtown Clayton. Sheila Sweeney, uh, the CEO of the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. here. Don't go anywhere. Oh, We're going to, okay. because we have uh, something we want to show you that we talked to earlier in the week, and that is a man from Highland, Illinois, by the name of Bill Abendroth. He's taking uh, traditional woodworking and, well, he's making it an art form. <laughs> I'm Bill Lobendroth. I'm a wood turner from Highland, Illinois. The sort of thing I do is called segmented, where you take flat boards, build them up into a bowl shape, and then turn that in a lathe. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a retired engineer, so this is, this is fun for me. In this case, it's just a flat board. It's just one by uh, hard maple. So you start with a solid block, start making uh, rings, which is what these are each layer is what I call a ring. So you glue that together, turn, glue, turn, glue, turn. And then eventually you would end up, this is a different shape, but you'd end up with uh, something that looks like this. So this has got, uh, this layer needs to be turned and then it has a little top piece on it yet that'll be a contrasting color. So as you, as you go, it starts to take shape and you've got a little flexibility on, uh, on changing the shape, but not a, not a whole lot unless you want to waste a whole lot of wood. It's probably got two more days to go. Uh, we'll start doing a finish on it, and that usually takes about two or three days also. So this will be what we call a feature ring. It's just uh, many, many little pieces glued together. It's not easy, it's not hard to do. The uh, easy part, or the hard part, is to do it safely. <laughs> so yeah, the day's goal is to enter the shop and leave the shop with the same number of fingers. I'll take several of these, glue those into a ring, and you'll end up with, with a feature ring like this. This is my first time being in the Clayton Art Fair. You know, it's a great venue, uh, you know, anything you want, great art, great food, great location. Uh, all the people I worked with are really top notch. Uh, and you know, they're, they're so good and they make it look easy. And that's, that's not easy to do, especially something of that size. So it's exciting, you know, it's essentially my backyard. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So Bill Abendroth joins us here now. Uh, that was some pretty cool stuff. We appreciate you letting us come see how you do your work. I'm curious, tell us more about how you went from, you said engineer, Yes. And then now artist, do you call yourself an artist, Bill? 
Oh, I don't know. That's a big debate whether you're uh, whether you make craft or art. And I think the definitive answer is I just make stuff. So, tell me about your transition, though, from engineer to craft craftsman or artist. <laughs> craftsman or artist. I mean, I've always been a woodworker, and I started out what we call flat woodworking. So I made tables and just you know furniture and stuff around the house. And the way they always kind of intrigued me. You got that third dimension and the the flowing lines. So. Uh, I brought a lathe, I don't know, a number of years ago, and I kind of drifted in and drifted out, but I always came back to it. And I guess about the last five or six years, I really got more, more into it. When did you set your sights on putting your work in, a, in an event like this? Well, when your house fills up and all your friends have your stuff, you gotta do, you gotta do something with it. So, <laughs> here I am. Was it easy to get into the, to the no, St. Louis Hardware? This is a tough show. It's, I mean, this is one of the top rated shows in the country. It really is. What does it take to get in? Um, consistency and, and a little talent and something just a little bit different, I think. So they're looking, there is a, as I understand it, it would be called a jury. There's someone is looking not just at, um, well, you tell me, is it the quality of your work, the, how, how prolific uh, your work, how, the work you've done? What, what's the, what are the qualifications? I think something that just tickles your fancy. But the, yeah, the judging process is very involved. As I recall, there were 1,400 applicants and it took three full long days to, to get down to the number of artists they have here. Have you ever put your stuff in a museum? Have you ever had a gallery showing? Is this the venue uh, or, or shows like this? Is this the way you get the public gets to kind of interact with, with you well, and with your work? Yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of still kind of new to the, uh, to the art show, Mark. I've done a few shows. Um, this is the biggest one I've done. Uh, it, it, I'm not doing this for a living. This is a hobby. So. I don't want to work too hard. I am retired, so. So maybe does that give you a certain freedom that uh, some of the other artists might not have, or a certain uh, relaxation that you're able to enjoy this with? I think so. I think if you're making things for somebody else to sell, I think you lose some creativity. If you're making stuff that you like and maybe it just amuses you, I think yeah, I think that creative flow really comes out. Those ju creative juices really flow. And have you done other shows? Yes, I've done several uh, smaller shows in southern Illinois. So how does this compare uh, to places you've been on the road to, oh, to show your stuff? This is really top notch. This is a well put together show. Uh, you know, it's, it's so well put together it looks easy, and I think we both know it's not. <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is fantastic. Great venue, uh, great, great collection of art, wide variety, and the, uh, all the staff that I've met here, they're just excellent. You're a local guy, but not everybody is. Uh, a, a lot of people aren't. I understand there's somebody here from Czechoslovakia this year. But yeah, if you uh, go around and read the signs, they're from all over the country. It's a big show, it's a big deal. Do you chat with them? Do you chat with folks who are traveling in from other places? You know, I've been so busy today and haven't had time, but hopefully uh, hopefully over the weekend we will. I was just wondering if you heard any feedback from them on what their perspective is. We're going to talk to some ourselves, but I was curious what you're hearing. Well, I think what I can tell you is I think they had 1,400 applications to get into the show, so you can probably draw your own conclusions from that. Uh, have you been able to walk around this year and, and check out any of the other booths? I've only made it down to one street, so. <laughs> do you enjoy it? Do you like? I really do. Yeah. Tell, tell me uh, what you what you like to see, or maybe what you have seen so far that's in, that's caught your eye. You know, I take bits and pieces from everything. Uh, a lot of people go to like a trade show and they and they'll say, oh, I'm gonna make that. I come away with a bit here and a piece there and a half of an idea there. Uh, and then put them together, and, you know, speak your own language. So are you, and, and, and just you as a craftsman or artist, although I think we've decided you're an artist, um, are you still evolving? Are you still changing yourself? And what has this kind of been like, this having, having had the engineering as a career and now this whole second act, it almost it seems like, I think if you're not growing and evolving, at least in my part, I get bored. So yeah, I, I have to keep growing and changing just to amuse myself, if nothing else. What's next for you? What's next for your work? Don't, not sure. I think I'll get some fresh ideas this weekend though, so ask me next week. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, well, uh, anything else? Have, let me ask uh, one other question about, in terms of uh, local, Fairs, do you participate in uh, over in Belleville? I have not. I plan to next year, though. But I guess it's kind of cool that we have. Those are both. That's a very nice show. Very nice show in Belleville. Very nice show here. It's 
quite the scene that we've got here within just a, a few miles of each other. Yeah, it really is. Uh, they're both very, very highly rated shows uh, throughout the country. So yeah, it's it's very impressive if you think about it. Did you ever think you would end up showing your wares at an art fair when you were still an engineer? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> never, never crossed my mind. <laughs> so that's what makes life interesting, though. Well, Bill said it. There's not just local artists here, but uh, from all over the country and even from outside the country here at the St. Louis Art Fair. We will talk to one of them in just a minute. Michael Womack is one of the artists uh, who's in from out of town, in from the Philadelphia area. Not your first time to the St. Louis Art Fair, though. No, this is my sixth year being at the fair. Which I, I gather you take a little pride in. Well, it's it's a very competitive show. It's very difficult to get into. Uh, the jury process starts early in the year, and they have something like 1,100 to 1,400 applications for 200 spots. So it's very competitive. And not only are you in it, uh, for that many years in a row, but you're, you're the, the Nancy Newman Rice Award winner from last year. Yes, which let me get in this year without applying, so that was nice. Very that cool. was a thrill to get that award. So you can give us a perspective because you travel the country. I guess first, what's going on with, is something going on with art fairs around the country? Well, I think art fairs are becoming more popular because people really like to meet the artists firsthand and not go through a secondary intermediary kind of like a gallery owner um, and people are really starting to enjoy that whole process of going to these fairs and the, and the artwork is getting much higher caliber at, at, of course I would say that but at these fairs um, so collectors are starting to come out and you know collect one or two or, or possibly a dozen artists um, and it's, it's, it's becoming more of a uh, acceptable trend. Is it more accessible to the, to the patrons? It is. It, it, it's, it's definitely better for the, for the patrons to walk around at their own pace and, and, and choose the artists they want to talk to. Uh, yeah, for sure. What's it do for the artists? Well, it's, it's, it's really a good way for us to make a living as an, art, as an artist. Uh, when I graduated from art school, really the only uh, avenue of, of a, to make a living was to teach, to teach college mostly, but also to teach uh, grade school, public school. Um, but those jobs are kind of few and far between. And I, I myself didn't want to get into that uh, and, then, and, be, and have it become the, the main thing that I did because it really, it really saps your energy. At the end of the day, you're not in a mood to create. Exactly, and, and then you, you panic in the summertime. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's difficult to do. Yeah. Um, I have friends that do it. So this is providing new opportunities perhaps for professional artists. Oh yeah, it really is. And, and, the, and the top shows, the, the, I call them the A-list shows, but the, the top shows really provide a, a clientele that is willing to put down some serious money for artwork. And they know the good shows from the sort of not so great shows. Now, you know, this show, this particular show, has a, an amazing reputation. Is it on the? Is it? it do you consider it top? I'm putting you on the spot. You're sitting in yeah. St. Louis. What are you going to say? No, but it's, it's the top ten. I mean, I I was put in the top five in the country. I don't, you know. And it, what? It, why? What se separates it? Uh, I think it's the way it's run. I mean, basically, the staff and the director, Cindy. They really made it their mission to have an, a show that that really accentuates the art more than other things. Um, I mean, there is other things to do. There's face painting. There's music. There's there's other uh, events and and activities people can do. But she really makes it about the artists, and she's been building it up for. I mean, I don't know what anniversary we are in here, but she's been doing it for many years. And, and they draw the top artists across the country. They're, they're from all over the place here. Um, and there's a lot of locals, local artists here too that are excellent as well. 
Um, but you, you walk around and it's really a top drawer group of people for sure. Have you noticed uh, art fairs and the, the uh, what they're bringing to artists and to patrons, have you noticed it doing things to even communities that are kind of building around in, in towns that didn't have much of an art scene before? Well, certain, yeah, certain fairs do that for the community. There's, you know, this one is one of them. And, you know, Fort Worth is another, Des Moines is another, where the community really gets behind the, the show. I do other shows, like the one in Philadelphia, where not so much, you know, the, the, the community it's, it's sort of like surprise when we sh are there, <laughs> but they're, they're not behind it like the show, for sure. It has a little bit of that, you know, the museum may be open 200 and something days a year, but this has, it's an event. It has a, it has a, a set time and it's a community event and people kind of want to show up. Is that accurate? Well, people travel to come here too. I mean, there are, I have collectors that come from Omaha, Nebraska and Kansas City and even Denver, and they, they come to the show because it's an event. Tell me what it's like to interact with people the way you do here that you might not get to if you were in a gallery. Oh, it's, it's night and day. It really is night and day. You know, when, when I'm at my booth and people are responding to my work and then I'm talking to them and sort of enlightening them about what I'm, what I'm trying to uh, accomplish, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's it's a far cry from a third person sort of interpreting, interpret, uh, you know, coming up with what I'm trying to say when I can say it probably the best myself. Uh, so it is night and day. And it may be more personal when you're able to do it yourself yeah. versus the kind of the, the broker aspect of it. Well, and a lot of people come here because they want to talk to the artists. Now, there are a lot of people that don't want to talk to the artists at all, and that's fine. I, it, Usually I'm pretty good at telling who's who. And maybe is that because they're just kind of dipping their toe into this world in the first place? I, a lot of people like to make up their own mind on, of, on the work without talking to anyone. And I respect that and I actually admire that. Um, and, I, you know, because I've sold some of my biggest pieces to people I haven't said a word to. And it's always a surprise. It always sort of takes me back, uh, aback, but um, these are people that are making their own decisions, and a lot of times I joke, I say, you don't want me to tell you about it? And they say, no, you'll, I don't want you to ruin it for us. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's sort of 50-50, you know. But a lot of people come here because they want to talk to you. What do you look forward to when you come to St. Louis and the St. Louis Art Fair? Uh, well, I just, I, I, uh, I look forward to the muggy weather. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping we're going to try to cool it off for you yeah, throughout I, the rest you know, of the weekend. I, I, I love the food in St. Louis, and you know, and and the uh, just the the ambiance of the neighborhood is just it's really great. I mean, I pretty much park my vehicle for the entire weekend and just walk everywhere. So it's I, I really love the neighborhood. And then the art fair, I don't know if circuit is the right word, but that's full time for you. You don't have to go out and supplement with other uh, yeah, galleries or other other things. It tends to be seasonal. It tends to be the fall. You know, this is the fall season. There's a spring season and a summer season. Not a lot happens in the winter, so I'm in my studio all winter long, really getting as much work done as possible. Can you tell me a little bit about your work? I do want to talk to the artist. Sure. I do want the story. So right. uh, have you always been in the, the pastels and drawing? No, this, the, my series is, is now in its eighth year, and it was uh, triggered by a dream that I had about being my, back in my old neighborhood which was Levittown near Philadelphia. It's one of the original post-war uh, developments. He was to housing what Henry Ford was to cars. He sort of developed this mass-produced housing thing. And so the visual effect is, is sort of uh, bizarre, especially to a six-year-old in 1962. So it really stuck in my mind. When suburbs were new to us. They were very new and everything was so so just similar but i had this dream about being back in my old neighborhood swimming in pools connected at night and the color was so vivid in the dream so when i woke up i said i have no idea what that means but i have to get it down on paper and i hadn't used my pastel since college essentially but they had all the right colors so i pulled them out turned out to be the perfect medium it's like drawing with pure powder pigment 
All the images are from my memory and from my imagination. So on one hand, it's, it's personal, it's part of my experience and my dream, but basically I'm drawing about the way we live in this country, uh, in suburbia, because at, at one point or another, just about everyone has lived in the suburbs at one time or another. And I, you know, I like to think that I'm, I'm making beautiful drawings of something that we consider ugly. Do you like sub the suburbs? Well, you know, I, I, I'm still there. <laughs> so I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm celebrating the suburbs. A lot of people look at my work and think, you know, I'm, I'm making some really dark statement. And that's fine. You know, I, I like to keep the work ambiguous and open to interpretation. Uh, so, you know, if they want to bring that dark uh, sort of sociological statement uh, to it, that's fine. That's fine with me. I, I, I like, you know, abstract art is is open to the viewer, and I like my work to be open to the viewer, open to their own interpretation. Well, thank you for sharing that with us and your time with us here, and thanks for coming back to St. Louis. Oh, I love it here. Thank we, you ha we hope you have a great weekend. Thank Michael you. Womack, the 2015 Nancy Newman Rice Award winner here for the St. Louis Art Fair. Thank you very much. Well, that's our show for this week. Our thanks to our guest and to the St. Louis Art Fair for hosting us. Until next week, hope you'll stay tuned.